Hello, and welcome to another episode of On Our Terms, a video series brought to you by the AIA Contract Documents. My name is Elisa Schneider, and I am an attorney with the AIA Contracts Document team. Today, I'll be discussing the identification and acceptance of proposed subcontractors and principal material suppliers on a project for construction. As always, nothing provided in this video is intended to be legal advice. If you're in need of legal advice, the best thing to do is to contact a local attorney licensed in your jurisdiction to give advice based on the specific facts and circumstances around your situation. For more details, please see our full disclaimer at the end of this presentation. So with that, let's get into it. Section 5.2.1 of the AIA A201 General Conditions for the Contract for Construction contains two key components. First, the contractor is required to notify the owner and architect of the persons or entities proposed for each principal portion of the work. Second, upon receipt of the contractor's notification, the owner and architect have 14 days to reasonably reject any of the proposed subcontractors or suppliers. It's important to remember there is no requirement for the owner and architect to affirmatively approve the proposed entities. Instead, if there is no rejection notice within the time period required, the proposed subcontractors and suppliers are deemed accepted. So, you may be asking, what is the purpose of this section? In most cases, a general contractor performs the work with the support of subcontractors and principal material suppliers. Because of that, providing a list of persons or entities that will perform the work governed by the contract for construction is important. For example, section 5.2.1 may help the owner and architect evaluate conflicts of interest with proposed subcontractors and material suppliers. It may help them confirm the proposed entities can deliver on the critical portions of the work. And it may also reduce the risk of contractor bid shopping after the execution of the contract for construction. As a reminder, bid shopping is generally described as the unethical practice of sharing a subcontractor's bid to another subcontractor with the hope that the other subcontractor will perform the same work for a lower price. The sections that follow 5.2.1 provide other important considerations during the process of identifying and accepting subcontractors and material suppliers. For example, section 5.2.2 requires that the subcontractor and suppliers must be mutually acceptable to the owner, architect, and contractor. Essentially, this section states that while the contractor cannot utilize a proposed subcontractor that has been timely rejected by the owner and architect, the contractor cannot be forced to use the subcontractor to whom it has also made reasonable objection. Then, Section 5.2.3 recognizes that a replacement subcontractor may not be able to perform the work for the same price and within the same time schedule as the subcontractor rejected by the owner and architect. Because of this, the contractor is entitled to a change order to reflect any changes in the contract sum or the contract time. However, it's important to note that the entitlement to this change is conditioned upon whether the rejected subcontractor was reasonably capable of performing the work and the contractor does not delay in proposing another subcontractor to whom the owner and architect has no reasonable objection. Now that I've covered the material in this episode of On Our Terms, I have a few reminders for you before I go. If you like the content provided in this episode, please like and subscribe below. Also, if you would like to learn more about our AIA contract documents, please visit our Learn More page at aiacontracts.org learn. There you will find many more videos on key contract terms, articles, document guides, document comparisons, and more. As always, if you have any questions about the content of this episode or any of our contract documents or services, please do not hesitate to reach out to us via email and phone using the information on this screen. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.